seeing him as a young boy and then watching him grab his first million, man. Those times. What was going through your mind at that time when you was thinking, hey, man, I was coaching this guy around a diamond. Now this man is getting a bunch of diamonds. I just... I, I I haven't been able to embrace that moment yet. Why not? Because I'm still Coach Monte. Yeah. And in life, you run across, I'm a coach. So it's many other kids and people and individuals in life that I've coached. Mm -hmm. I had to understand that not only am I a coach, I'm a, I'm a humanitarian. Yeah. I'm a human being that believe in helping others. Um, I'm a natural giver. Uh, I'm genuine as 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 they probably come. Mm -hmm. And my humility and my ability to be able to to stand beside other people. At one point, like we all suffer, be with where would I have been mm. if I would have did this? Everybody who know me know I'm a I'm an athlete. Yeah. N not just an athlete. I'm a great fucking athlete. Yeah. Uh, I'm a great leader. Yeah. Um, and anything that I indulge in in my life, like I, I do it at the, the top of the top. So when I was playing sports and, you know, everything I was doing in my life, I was the drum age at Matt High School for three years. Yeah. Uh, I exceeded in that. I excelled in that. Like I could have went to college and did that. You know what I'm saying? If I would have took the instrument serious. I never took the instrument serious. I took mm. being the leader serious. Yeah. And I'm so thankful for Mr. Barry Alexander for uh, seeing that in me. Yeah. Um, my baseball coach, um, Coach Williams, like all the people in my life, seen certain things in me. So when I came back, you know, Stanley Davenport, my godfather, um, Coach Rich, you know, Coach Mo, who gave me the opportunity to be Quan's coach, like they gave me the opportunity to be by Quan's side. When I was able to to go back and look and be like, this the same kid that was shot on the baseball field. Mm. This the same kid that. You know, he had so many different discernments. He played on uh, second base. I moved into the outfield. I took the corn before I took the corn. Yeah. Spiritually. Like, and I take to a lot of my kids. And certain people want to ask, like, when you be like, oh, I did this. I made a promise and I did this. It weren't for this. I couldn't fight the godly spirit of to why we stayed connected. Because yeah. I'm connected to a lot of my kids that I've touched across the world, whether it's shooting them a text here and there or yeah. them texting me. Corn had the same equal attachment to me that I had to him. Yeah. So you got to think, I attached myself to this kid and said, hey, man, you know, whatever you want to do in life, I'm with you. Yeah. He also had a discernment on him, even with regardless of what people want to think, he kept he had that same thing for me. Of course. Because it wouldn't have never worked. Yeah. Because I've coached two, three hundred kids yeah. in high school. I coached high school ball. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I've ran across from my, my reign at Matnell High School and then I ended at Langston Hughes High School. Like I touched a lot of these kids, but these kids didn't have that same connection. They didn't want to keep it as mm -hmm. much. You can only push a person so far. Yeah, I can. I can reach out to be high every day, but if be high don't respond, Come it on. ain't equal. Come on, you understand what I'm saying? So, you know, when it when it was time for me to look at him achieving everything in his life, Corn would buy diamonds. He would buy the diamonds, like you said. Yeah. He would buy. <laughs> he would buy his necklaces, and you yeah. know, this he is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He would buy this stuff and come to me, bro. Because I used to have that stuff back in the yeah. day. You can look at some of the pictures I post. He would wear my M, my yeah. name, Monte. <laughs> like, he would wear my jewelry. So, you know, when he was able to be able to buy his own stuff, man, let me tell you something, bro. It's nothing greater in this world to be somebody standing next to somebody you truly want to see win and not have no hate in your heart, not have no malice in your heart, not have no envy. Because I see a lot of niggas stand next to niggas and they be wishing they was in that spot. I never wished I was in his spot. I just wish that I could continue to be right here with him, achieving these goals with him, watching him win. And it didn't come with me saying, oh, I ain't winning. I ain't doing this and that. And I told his dad years ago, like, bro, be acting a certain type of way, bro. I ain't got no Rolexes. I ain't got this and that. But, nigga, I'm still happy for you. It wasn't about me having this. And they went and bought me this Rolex. Yeah. <laughs> you understand what I'm yeah. saying? Like, bro made sure I had certain things to accommodate my life, but a lot of people would feel like, oh, you fucking with corn for this reason. I'm here to tell the world, corn gave me opportunity. Yeah. 
Quan never gave me monetary things. Yeah. Monte worked his ass off. Come on. Quan ain't never came to me and gave me a bag of money, bought me a car. He's never done none of that. I purchased my own home before he ever owned a home. Come on. You understand what I'm saying? And that's one of the things that allowed us to have that certain level of respect for each other. Because yep. Quan respected people that didn't want anything from him. What I wanted from him yep. was to see him win. Exactly. My job and what the business the business we obtained throughout this path, and I tell Cordis all the time, we deserved and we earned that. Facts. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just always wanted to continue to be that life coach to him as I am to many other people, and I was that person until his dying day. Serving as a buffer, Monte, for Rich Homie Quan. <laughs> Talk about that job right there, too, because – as a manager, there are other people that want to do what you did with Quan for their partners and with their friends, and they just want to see them win and succeed. But they also got to understand that, hey, man, you're going to have to be a buffer for this person as well. And you're not just the buffer for the Grammy Awards or the BET Awards. Shit. You're a buffer for this Negro down the street, this crazy fool over here. You see what I'm saying? Break that journey down to me. The hardest part of it. Ooh. That's the hardest part of this. Um, DJ Smalls told me some years ago that I ain't going to tell the whole story, but I'm going to tell a little bit of it. He said, and this is where I want y'all to understand mm -hmm. being that buffer comes in. Mm -hmm. DJ Smalls had reached out to me to do an interview with Quan. I went to Quan. I told him about it. Quan said he didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I had a relationship with this guy. I was trying to get one of Quan artists on his platform. Damn. So I told him, hold on, hold on, man. I'm, I'm working on it, which yeah. I was. We had signed with Motown at the time. We had another department that would handle PR. Yeah. Uh, I said, just give me a minute, bro. And I remember one day hitting him about the twins. Um, we got... The, the twins that's with us uh, from Canada, AO, uh, Chase and Nov. Yeah. I'm trying to break them low key. I yeah. never went to these dudes and said, I'm going to do this and do that. Mm -hmm. But Quan coming to me like, bro, we got to get twin. And but I took it to him. And when we did the, the interview, I could just remember him coming back and he said, I, I texted him on what's the name one day, Be High. And I said, damn, bro, you ain't got to cap me down. And he put, I learned from the best. And I was like, what the hell? I snapped. I said, what the hell that mean? I ain't, ain't shit never capped by me, bro. Like, I ain't never did no capping ever. And it went there, and I, I commend this guy <laughs> so much. You got to. Because he texted me when it went. I went left. Yeah, I know you did. And he texted me, and he said, let's get on the phone. Mm-hmm. I called him. I was making a left turn to go through these little dark roads on to go home. We got on the phone, and, and long story short, basically what he told me was, I made that comment because I DM'd Quan, and Quan said, shit, when you need it done. And I was like, damn, nigga threw me all the way under the bus. He had told me he didn't want to do it. And we talked, and we had to air out a lot of shit. And in the process of, of us that airing that out, I told him when you did do the interview with Quan, I took it to the label. That's why he came. I put that in the, the cult of thing. He was like, I wouldn't do that. I just know what Quan telling me. And this the words that he said to me when it come to being this buffer. And I'm going to give you another layer of this buffer. He said, as a manager, you know, you, you signed up to eat shit. Mm. He said, you signed up to be... The, the negative bearer of everything when it come to him. You yeah. got to protect him. You signed up for that, Monte. And that particular day, I said, damn. Me and Corey would always be like, damn, bro, we got to do all this. Radio One, you worked for Radio One. <laughs> Fucking, like, everybody hated me. But I had, to, I had to take the hate and allow y'all to love him. Woo. And at one point, it would bother me. And then I started saying, you know what, man, by the grace of God, I'm glad I could be in this position. Yeah. Because he might not know how to fix things like I know how to fix them. And people will understand that, hey, bro, I'm a hunter. Yeah. I don't mean no harm. Niggas call themselves real. 
Like me, bro, I'm, I'm authentic, bro. Yeah. I be wanting to say what he said. Ooh. You understand what I'm saying? And it came a point in time I started telling Quan, like, hey, bro, if you say you don't want to do nothing, I ain't about to go to these people and say, you got a personal day or that. I'm yep. about to start telling people, you said you don't want to do it. <laughs> but that's where it came in with me to where it was like, Tay, keep your discernment. You know what I'm saying? Keep your, keep yourself in line <laughs> because you signed up to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. every person out there in this world that wants to be a manager, it's two of us when it comes to, to managing coin on the executive top side of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And both of us have had to go through so much when it came to, to to dealing with him and it's so many other people that had to be buffers in this yeah. and I give everybody their praises from Fly to Day Day yeah. to fucking Dre. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To some of his partners, you know what I'm saying? Like Nard, like everybody had to be that person in that person's life. You know what I mean? And for me, I'm not the I'm I'm I'ma put myself at the forefront of certain things, but we all built this cult to be able to keep him right there and protect him throughout these years. And I'm going to forever do it. You know what I mean? Right is right, wrong is wrong. And I'm accountable for any other other things that I've contributed or that he's contributed negative to the game. So it's just about accountability. And, you know, being a manager, you have to realize it's not all about the glitz and the glamour. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times us managers don't even get an opportunity to do this. Yeah. Like people don't really want to talk to us. People don't really want to hear what the fuck we got to say. It's like, that nigga the superstar. He made you. That's how a lot of people feel. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Like People like to feel like you wouldn't be you without him. They don't like to take the... Well, see, the thing is, is that for me, and I just hate to uh, turn it and make it about me in here, but I always understood Facts. what the people on the side really brought to the table because I had people do that for me. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's people that uh, bone crushers, Rashad, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I wouldn't have been me without them doing what they were doing behind the scenes for me. And I always felt like those stories needed to be told as well. But then also, what you do is a position in this game. Yeah. And it's a valuable position. Yeah. And it's the position that a lot of people want to play. But they don't have a point of reference to it. So I would take it upon myself to use you as a point of reference for the next person to be able to do it. But then also interview you in such a way that, see, when you're talking about all this eating shit and having to deal with that, yeah. it's another young ass manager out here that said, I ain't about to do that, what the heck? And then they hear Monte say, I had to do that so Rich Homer could be the greatest of all time. I had to do and it. And then they're gonna say, if Monte could do it, I then I can do it. You exactly. see what I'm saying? So these are the stories. Your story has to be told because it's just as important as every other damn story out here. Yeah, to be that cult in somebody's life. Like, bro, shit. a female told me this shit, bro, mm -hmm. one time, like trying to be funny. Oh, nigga, I heard you was a dude boy. Oh, hell no. And I said, hell yeah, I was the greatest dude boy I ever created. Because in order to be the boss and the leader that I am, see, I'm yeah. a leader. Dion putting out letters. He changing the culture, right? Come on. They jerseys got dog yeah. and leaders on them, right? Come on. My shit was going to have an L on it. Come on. When it came to this RHQ shit, my shit had a D and an L Ooh. on it and a C on it. Come on. I mastered everything when it came. I knew how to DJ. I knew how to be the hype man. I knew how to be the manager. I knew how to be the role manager. I knew how to be the executive. I'm going to hold his bag when he needed me to hold his bag. I'm going to count the motherfucking money. I'm going to snap on the motherfucking promoter if he needed to be snapped on. Come on. You get what I'm saying? To wear a hat, you understand what I'm saying? This a fitted hat. Come on. This fit my head. That's right. My, crown, my size was crowned. It ain't adjustable. Come on. You understand what I'm saying? So when I adjusted and I said, I'm going to put my hat on and I'm going to be this executive, I had already wore every other size, guys. Yeah. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Be high. Yeah. So for everybody out there that's feeling like they just want to, when I was standing on stage with Corn, it wasn't because I wanted to do that. Mm. It was because he wanted me there. Mm. Because he was still in his shy moments and phases. And there's so many people like to look at our story and say, oh, you rode a coattail of this. No, I ain't have to ride no coattail. I had a motherfucker who wanted me there with him. But no, even I mean, when anybody they that's saying that type of stuff is just an idiot. Yeah, it, it, it's they idiot. No, nah, that's some idiotic bullshit. You took the word out my mouth. I was finna say, idiocity <laughs> is, is realistic, but sometimes you have to address these things when you're yep. trying to teach. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, 
when I hear that stuff, I'm like, yeah, you a fool. You don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. But for me to get out here in the world and break this shit down to you and get you to really understand what you may have to go through at a certain point in your life, hey, partner, you can call it what you want to. Yeah. At the end of the day, my salary and my lifestyle upheld me being an executive. That was never your life. See, I'm so humble. When you see me in my old ass truck or when you see me around, you left to feel like, oh, corn was shining on his people. Corn wasn't shining on his people. Come on. His people was paid. Exactly. The two niggas at the top of this shit, we was paid. His brother, which was his role manager, yep. he got paid. Yeah. What you choose to do with your life and how you choose to foreshare your life and what you choose to do in your life is what you choose. Corn used to tell me all the time, bro, you too humble. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And that's one thing I think he wanted from me. He's be like, bro, pop your shit, bro, pop your shit. Nah, bro, I live in a world of where it go back to what I said before. I live in a world of where I understand, I understand, and I overstand that humility brought me a long way. Yeah. I don't have to use material possessions or none of these things to make a person feel like they're less than me. Exactly. Because what they're doing in the world now today, everything ain't authentic. My role is authentic. Yep. Yours may not be. It don't make me no better than you. Come on. But I put in the work to go get the authentic shit. I didn't go pay $100 for this. Come I on. put the work in to do this, and I'm not going to make myself feel like I'm more elite. So, man, you know, it just sometimes you got to be able to withstand perseverance, man. Y'all niggas got to be able to stand up in the paint. Mm -hmm. It's just like that young football player that, that couldn't, that feel like he couldn't make it. And you feel like, oh, he better than me. He's no better than you. Right. Your muscles can grow to that same size as his if you go put the work in. You got to put in that work. You know what I'm saying? I'm smaller than a lot of linemen in college, Come on. but I probably can lift the same amount of weight that See they that? can lift because I put that work in. Come on. You know what I'm saying? So when you when you going to hear all that, oh, da, 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 and then a lot of people scared of what somebody think about them. I ain't never been afraid of what nobody think about me. Feel how you want to feel. Think what you want to think. I'm the person that got to wear this on the inside. I know who I am. Exactly. And for the world, you got to know who you are.